And we were just recovering from Gen X. Hi, this is Scott Ott with Stephen Green and Bill Whittle. This episode of Right Angle brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Gentlemen, Brood X, or actually pro probably more properly described as Brood 10, the Roman numeral 10, is a uh, cluster of some billions of cicadas that are about to emerge from the ground and go on a wild mating frenzy in uh, mostly Midwestern states, kind of the Eastern seaboard, a little bit in Indiana and Ohio are the major concentrations of those. This happens once every 17 years, and um, this seems like a, a strange topic for us, but the way we looked at it was this is something that touches everybody. I mean, who doesn't have fond childhood memories, Stephen Green, of, of walking through a field of crunchy cicada husks? Oh, it was it was like living inside a bowl of Rice Krispies that you just poured milk into. <laughs> Yes. There's the, the sound of it is during the day when you're walking around, it's crunch, 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 crunch. Now, if I remember correctly, my first experience with cicadas was uh, the spring of 1985. I was a sophomore at Missouri Military Academy in Mexico, Missouri. And I'm going to change a name here to uh, protect the innocent because I'm sure he's had a very nice life since this incident. But I but I have to share this. My company commander uh, a, a cadet officer, not a not a faculty officer, so a, a fellow student, a, a senior, a captain. Uh, he and I did not get along at all because uh, I was a 15, 16 year old know-it-all and he was in charge of me. And so, of course, we butted heads a lot. That's that's on me. Um, we were in a cicada super cycle, if I remember correctly, where uh, two of the different cycles, you have the 17 year big cycle and there's like a, an 11 or a 13 or something and they happen at the same time. So just cicadas everywhere. Well, every Sunday we had a formal military review, you know, a, a, a parade, you're standing at attentions while they're handing out whatever that week's award is. You're standing in the Missouri sunshine and the muggy heat in your dress blues and it's sweaty and awful. And because of uh, happenstance, I happen to be front row center of my company uh, week after week, which means that when we're standing at attention and the company commander is facing the company, we're about uh, 15, 20 feet apart. And I would just stare at him Sunday after Sunday, just staring him down. Now, I'm, star I'm always standing at perfect attention, so he can't actually do anything, but I'm just always doing this, right? Well, it's Mother's Day weekend, and since this is a boarding school, mothers have flown in, not just from around the state of Missouri, not just from around the country, but from around the world. We had students uh, uh, from Italy, from Venezuela, from Mexico, all over the place. And this is not a big school. We had like 350 kids. Nevertheless, all of these moms decked out for Mother's Day, all of us in our dress blues in the sunshine. And when it comes time for the uh, the faculty brass to troop the line, that is to, to march around us and make sure we're all squared away, the order is given to go from parade rest to attention. And the way that works is the company commander snaps himself to attention, you know, brings a sword up against his shoulder and says, company! And the platoon leaders echo the command. They say platoon as they snap to attention. And then the company commander gives the actual order to come to attention, which is a 10 hut. Well, he shouts, hut 10, and a cicada flies in his mouth. <laughs> and he did not say hut next. In fact, he shouted an S word expletive so loudly <laughs> that I think they heard him halfway across the state at Wentworth Military Academy. I turned beat red. I am laughing so hard, but still standing at perfect attention that I had cramps up and down my rib cage that I can still feel to this day. <sighs> That's my cicada story. I hope everybody gets something that they can tell just as well sometime down the road. Now, Bill Whittle, uh, there are certainly going to be enough jokes as these things start to take uh, wing and uh, and clinging to every tree and every branch in the area and making a roar that sounds like something between a lawnmower and a chainsaw uh, that people will be making jokes that, you know, after 2020, now we've got a plague of locusts. Uh, but in fact, these are rather benign. Uh, locusts, when they show up, actually eat everything um, so they can strip a field bare of any kind of crop in 
in a matter of minutes. Uh, the cicadas are like a good democratic socialist. They just want to have sex. And so that's what they will do in vast numbers. They will emerge, they will breed, they will lay eggs, and eventually those eggs will fall to the ground and the nymphs will drill into the ground and eat tree uh, roots for the next 17 years before they emerge again. Um, why is it, do you think, that these uh, this weird kind of 17-year cycle is so captivating to most people, and it, you know, it's a story in the Washington Post. This is just a frickin' bug, Bill. Well, it's a, um, you know, plague of locusts is your, uh, it's up there in terms of your overall things to avoid as far as biblical uh, nightmares are concerned. And coming off of, you know, 2020, to hear that there's a plague of locusts coming is probably enough to be, get people's attention. Now you go and spoil all the fun by telling me they don't actually eat anything. They're they're basically vegan locusts. They're social justice insects. They just mill around and don't actually do anything. Uh, so, you know, anytime you see nature out of control like that, it, it, it kind of puts a, a like a really deep fear into human beings. So just any time, insect is an insect, you know, yeah, squash that, but if we see enough insects to squash you all of a sudden in one place, then it gets to be a slightly different story. Uh, I don't have any experience with cicadas. Uh, I, I grew up in Florida, so I'm more of a, a guy with a lot of mayfly stories. Like the guy who started <laughs> laughing when he flew through a mayfly, uh, drove through a mayfly swarm on his motorcycle and he's pulling bugs out of his teeth for the next yeah. three days. So I will just wrap up this uh, piece of, of, of incisive political commentary uh, with this. <laughs> Do not eat the cicadas. Um, and I can I can uh, tell you, I'm speaking from experience here. Uh, I went to uh, Thailand and I swore to myself I was never going to eat anything disgusting or gross down there, including and especially insects. But uh, the group of us went out, a uh, bunch of uh, young, super straight males and I was an American. There were two Canadians. There was a, a Brit and two Australians. So it's the entire Anglosphere represented. And they're all eating grasshoppers. And I couldn't let the team down. I couldn't be like the American guy says, I don't know. I don't think I want to. So I did. Uh, it's not the taste, folks. If you if you ever do happen to get a cicada in your mouth, it's it's the it's the chitin. It, it's like it's like a grit that will not go away. You can drink you can drink water after water. <laughs> Swish your meth out. You can try ice cream, nothing. Those little gritty particles are going to stay with you for three days. So take my advice on this, uh, youngsters. No matter what your TikTok uh, views will be, you don't want to go out there and start mowing the lawn with your mouth and chowing down on these things because you will regret it. Uh, <laughs> satisfying though it may be. Not to mention delicious. Now, most non-human uh, beings are actually going to ignore Bill's advice, and this is really like an animal gourmand bacchanal when this happens, because <laughs> squirrels and everything else, possums, they're out there just eating these things. And literally, a lot of wild animals will eat cicadas until they kind of slip into a food coma, they, until they can't do it anymore. Pues sauvage. When, the last time this happened in 2004, I had just started as a director of a Christian children's camp that was set in uh, rural Pennsylvania on about 72 acres of wooded land. And I can remember um, welcoming uh, one of the families to the camp, and we were standing outside talking to each other. And uh, little by little, we had to keep raising our voices and getting louder and louder until it must have looked from a distance like we were angry with each other because we were shouting. <laughs> and you had to shout as... Uh, who, who was this that uh, saying this? It was it was the police, wasn't it? Uh, we had to shout above the din of our Rice Krispies, as Sting once sang. <laughs> we had to shout above the cicadas uh, because of that noise. I remember sitting out in the yard just outside of our house, which was up in the woods, and hearing the sound of these things coming up out of the grass and crawling through last year's dead leaves and, you know, making their way up. And then they'd crawl up the bases of trees and they'd stop and shed this husk. And they kind of look like these weird grub beetle kind of things. And then they shed this husk and they're this magnificent, scary wing thing with red eyeballs and green heads and yellow wings and just really amazing creatures. Um, and, and I'll be honest with you, the reason why we did this show is because cicada plagues are awesome. 
<laughs> it is really, <laughs> it is really cool to think of an acre of land might have one and a half million cicadas on it. They're going to come up out of the ground and like mayflies in a sense, they come out, they breed, they die. And in this case though, we don't see them next year. We wait another 17 years, which if I'm doing my math correctly, we're looking at 2038. Is that, is that correct? In the year 2038, yep. when two out of three of us will be dead, will be the next time. <laughs> That what, you're a, what a bizarre see. thing to say, man. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm going to loan out my robot liver to you guys. You'll last as long as I do. <laughs> we appreciate that. What makes, it think, what makes you think you're going to be the survivor? <laughs> my robot liver. Well, that's the fair. oldest. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you uh, to get as much information about these cicadas as you can, uh, fulfilling the historical mission of Right Angle here. Uh, they just the, did. The educational devotion that we have here. And... If you've got kids or grandkids and you live in any of the areas where this is happening, get them outdoors, get them out in the woods, let them handle these things. They're not going to bite you. They're, they are kind of they, like you can pick them up and stick and they'll hold onto your finger really tight, but let them do that kind of stuff. One of the fondest memories as a kid was picking up and playing with bugs. And if anything, that's what you should get out of this. Get the kids out of the house, stop the video games and let them see one of the magnificent marvels of God's green earth. <laughs> For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible. 